Cube at ServiceNow Knowledge 14 is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. This is Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. This is uh, SiliconANGLE Wikibon's The Cube. The Cube goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We're here live at Knowledge 14. ServiceNow's big event. There are about 6,600 people here. ServiceNow, smoking hot company. Another smoking hot company is Red Hat. Mike Carraway is here. He's with the IT group inside of Red Hat. Mike, welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, so we were at the Red Hat Summit a couple weeks ago here at Moscone. I was back in Boston watching live, you know, jealous. Yeah. I hate giving up the mic. <laughs> but, uh, but it was really a great event. I presume you were there. Yeah, I was here. It was a, it was a great show. I was really excited to hear some of the stuff we're doing with the uh, advancing Linux, but also uh, a lot of exciting things with uh, our cloud tools. We talk about Red Hat a lot because everybody wants to be the Red Hat of something, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's like, the VCs always say, ah, oh, I get 100 business plans a, a week. We're going to be the Red Hat of X, X big yeah. data, cloud, or whatever it is. <laughs> That's but, great. Uh, but uh, we always joke, well, Red Hat's going to be the big, the Red Hat of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. So you guys are transforming. You're growing very rapidly. Um, you got people's attention. Sure. You know, all of a sudden, you know, 10, 12 years ago, everybody sort of let you do your thing. You had competition, but it was, you know, this right. kind of eclectic little bunch of folks, and, and now you're really going after some big prizes. So, uh, yeah. so congratulations on actually being in a position to do that, being a, a billion dollar plus open source software company. It's uh, exciting. No, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, uh, being on the IT side of that, uh, our CO calls them high class problems, right? So all the problems that come from growth in your product set, uh, and uh, pretty extensive growth in our customer base, uh, our, our customers, our associates. Uh, and so that's created some challenges and uh, that's what we in IT spend a lot of our time working on. So as an IT uh, practitioner within a technology company, uh, is that different than being, say, an IT practitioner at you know, manufacturer or financial services, there's largely IT, you know, technology companies, but, but are there differences, are there similarities, and what are they? So do you mean, what is it like being the IT guy when all of your customers know more about technology than you <laughs> yeah. do? Or the, at least they think they do. <laughs> well, I, I told somebody the other day, my entire career I, I'd had customers that thought they knew more than me, and for the first time since coming to Red Hat, I've got some that I actually do, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I mean, it, it is an interesting challenge. It's a challenge for us because you know, we endeavor to uh, we call it our customer one program. We try to use a lot of our own tools um, in the beta stage, and so that creates some interesting and fun challenges, um, but also just trying to enable a dynamic organization uh, you know, creates a lot of challenges. Okay, so the old, you know, they used to call it the dog fooding, you know, but now it's drink your own champagne. Yeah, I've been told to use that term now. Yeah, uh, the first time I heard it was Oliver Bussman, the CIO at SAP, we're at SAP Sapphire. He said, no, 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 we don't eat dog food here. You know, we drink <laughs> champagne. Like, of course, it's SAP. Right. So, um, but so, okay, so you are sort of a proving ground for a lot of the technology guys, so, so th that carries a lot of weight, right? I mean, it does, yeah. You know, you're giving feedback and it's direct, hey, this doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, in the places where, you know, the, we over, our IT job overlaps with Red Hat products, we aspire to, to do that. We use our own middleware, Linux, obviously, and over the last uh, year now, we've been using a lot of our own cloud tools like OpenShift. Uh, to deploy our applications, and this year we're making moves with our OpenStack platform. And how's it working for you? Um, it's uh, it's all working really well. I mean, we're really excited um, with the things we're seeing, and um, you know, excited to see sort of what's going to happen as uh, some of these tools get out there a little more broadly. Yeah, I mean, well, you guys are early adopters. You have to be uh, you have to be the proving ground, right? Yeah. If it, I mean, it doesn't work in your shop. You know, that's a problem. No, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we, we try to prove out our own tools, but one of the things that uh, you know, led us to sort of serve us now is we also are trying to be a proving ground just around cloud in general. Uh, as Red Hat looks to go to the cloud as an organization, we as an IT shop are making a big push uh, into the cloud. So um, that extends all the way up from our own infrastructure as a service, platform as a service tools that we offer. Uh, but also into uh, being an early and heavy adopter of software as a service tool. So you're extensively using cloud for infrastructure as a service? Is that what I'm to infer? Or? We're doing some things there, and uh, this year looking to do more you know, with our own OpenStack product. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about ServiceNow and what you're doing. I think you said you've been a ServiceNow customer for, for a couple of years. Yeah, it's been a couple of years now. What, uh, what was the impetus to, to bring it in? What was life like before, and how did it change? Yeah, we had a, uh, a system that I believe was uh, referred to in one of our IT town halls by uh, an associate as uh, soul crushing. 
Um, uh, and that, uh, that was, Sucked the life right out of you. <laughs> that was our impetus for change. And <laughs> Somebody like called it the Dementors. <laughs> I saw that somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was a legacy um, uh, IT service management tool. Uh, as a growing organization, we felt like we needed a lot more flexibility. We needed to be able to move faster. Um, and we had the vision then uh, at a very early stage of what you've heard uh, talked about from ServiceNow as it relates to um, enterprise service management, you know, tools that would not just work for IT, but something we could take across the enterprise. Um, and we just weren't finding that within our existing tools, so we looked at some different options and uh, you know, chose ServiceNow. So talk a little bit about how it's actually worked. Uh, we just had Atticus on from, from Intuit. He's just getting started right. uh, on this journey. You've been at it for a couple of years. You know, are people executing the vision that Frank and Fred have laid out in terms of building these applications, getting the productivity gains, uh, changing the way that they look about their work being you know, value add people? I think that's absolutely true, and I'd also like to think to some extent that what Frank and Fred are talking about is to some extent true by what we as customers um, have begun to do with the tool. Uh, I think uh, a lot of us you know, began to see the enterprise opportunity there early on. Uh, and so we're really seeing that being lived out um, in the enterprise space. Um, we have uh, put a number of different departments on it. We've got others that we're looking at doing. Uh, we see the opportunity to move past that and move into more of a, a portals kind of a space where it's a solution. Uh, in other words, I'm a, new, I'm a new hire. Here's my set of uh, services. I'm a manager. Here's my set of services. Um, and then we also uh, are you know, looking at uh, things that we can do with respect to continue the automation that you heard talked about and the um, orchestration, interfacing that with what we're doing from a cloud perspective to be able to spin up cloud services. Has anybody broken? Has anyone put in some ridiculous application that makes too many calls to something and just, <laughs> you know, I, I love the citizen developer angle and I love that people are out there trying things and I, I book you around with it a little bit myself, but I always wonder if somebody, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the database a little bit too frequently and uh, no. causing some angst. Well, we, haven't, we haven't run into that and where we're at in our journey is um, we've not really pushed heavily into the citizen developer space yet. Um, so um, ask me again next year, I'm sure I'll have those stories to uh, tell. But well, one of the things we're trying to do with it though is to take some of the things that we know as being a fairly disciplined IT execution shop and bring some of those same disciplines into, into this tool. So um, without breaking the agility of the tool, making sure we have good um, you know, project management, agile and release kinds of practices around the tool. Well, you know, we talk, you're talking about the, the, the development side. It's, I'm always intrigued by the notion of, you know, pass, right. right? Somebody said to me, pass, the artist formerly known as middleware. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but there's sort of interesting things bubbling up, right? You got sort of infrastructure as a service plus, you got the sort of SaaS minus, right. you guys are, are doing your thing. So I would imagine, <clears throat> given that you're drinking your own champagne, you're going to be pretty focused on your own development tools, but do you see um, something like ServiceNow potentially for certain service-oriented applications no, absolutely. finding its way in? and, yeah, and Absolutely, and, and we, do, we do that today with other, other uh, types of tools like this historically where things that are really germane to the tool and the sets of services the tool provides, a lot of that development happens around that tool. Um, both with workflows is a good example, also customizing the user interface. Uh, so we see a lot of uh, opportunity there. And then behind all that or underneath it, um, we have a, a fairly robust set of middleware based on our own products, obviously. Um, enterprise service bus and SOA services that sit behind that to support it. So ServiceNow, these events are interesting. Our first one was last year at, uh, in Vegas at the Aria. Right. And we saw these, these cakes, you know, these pictures of cakes and people baking cakes and we heard stories of, of cakes. I'm like, what is that? And people are like, oh, we bake cakes because we're so happy. We make a cake, we send it to service now. We, <laughs> we love these guys. They, they've changed our lives. And we're like, really? And they, they clap during product demos, which is very rare. Right. You see it some other, you see it at Tableau, you see it at Splunk, you see it at ServiceNow, but it's very rare at a, you know, one of some of the large three letter companies to see that, right? Right, right. So my question is, is uh, have there been any of those sort of bake a cake moments for you and, and what were they? I'm, I'm feeling bad I haven't sent anybody a you cake. Didn't, you didn't bake I, a I cake. I didn't send a cake, <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a little guilty now. Um, no, we, we definitely are seeing that. I mean, um, and it excites us because, um, as you mentioned at our, you know, our Red Hat event, we, we see that same kind of uh, right. zealous uh, nature and, and uh, passion about the tools and. Um, it's exciting to see that around this tool, and we do feel some of that. I mean, we've seen it um, as we were able to go out outside of IT and start offering service management capabilities to other groups. 
uh, things that before would have we'd have spent months and months trying to find the right tool, a function-specific tool, or, or or even worse, we'd have gone off and built something from scratch. That we could just offer that capability out with, you know, reasonable, I'd say, modest amount of customization. I mean, that, that's pretty exciting. I, perhaps I owe somebody a cake. I, I how, how do you yeah. <laughs> how do you measure? Do you measure productivity of you know the the staff, the impact that that these types of initiatives are having? I think you know we're at a fairly foundational level with that right now. I mean, we think about it just relative and sort of anecdotally relative to what the past would have been. And I've been in IT for longer than I'll mention here and give away my age. But um, you know, we, we we sort of historically have seen when you go out to automate workflows and anything that had the word process in it, you'd be spending months to a year plus uh, to begin to do something to help uh, our, our business customers with that. And um, the, you know the fact that we can turn that down to months and now even weeks sometimes uh, is um, that's pretty substantial. So I, you know we haven't measured that, but, but that's a time to value metric it's, speed. It's, it's, it's time to value, and then Doing it's also you know it's also the opportunity cost. Um, we as an IT mm -hmm. shop supporting a growing organization, there's a lot of things we're trying to do that um, you know invest time and energy in, in high value places to enable the Red Hat business. Um, Process management is certainly important, an important piece of that, but time we spend there is time we can't spend as an IT shop uh, doing things that uh, help us get products to market, for example. So what's next with you, with you guys, either, either on ServiceNow or, 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 or not, that's exciting you? Right. Um, well, you know, associate productivity is something that we've begun to focus on uh, because of our growth. Um, I think the stat was our, uh, we grew by uh, about um, 20 percent um, over the last year or so, thousand plus people walking around that were completely new. Um, I tell people to imagine what their um, first year was like and you know, trying to figure out how to be productive and multiply it times a thousand. That's, that's yeah. what we're dealing with. Uh, so productivity has become really important to, to us and so we're looking at a number of cloud-based uh, type solutions to help with that and um, a lot of things around collaboration and communication that we think uh, are important to us. But a, a critical layer of that is the, uh, the knowledge enablement and process enablement. Uh, and we think ServiceNow, it already is, and we think it can play a much, much larger role there for us. Excellent. Mike, thanks very much for coming sure. on theCUBE. It's really a really pleasure seeing you. Happy to be here. Keep it right there, everybody. Uh, PoundNo14 is the hashtag. Jeff Frick and I will be right back. This is theCUBE.